Hey everybody, so today we're talking about Unity Muse, specifically Muse Animate. Uh, 30 second overview of Unity Muse is that it is a lot of creator centric AI tools in, inside of Unity, um, such as the chat, texture, and sprite generation. Um, so each of those things, the chat is basically a text to X, whether it be documentation, whether it be forums, whether it be C sharp scripts for you, uh, you can type in whatever you need and it helps you get there. It uh, can also operate off of errors or bugs that you're seeing uh, and can try to help you troubleshoot in real time. Textures generates textures in a similar capacity as well as sprites. Animate is one of the newest that is in pre-release and the idea is that it's going to be text to animation. So uh, a lot of moving parts here. And in order to really show this to y'all, the first thing I'm going to do is just pull in a game ready asset, let's say. Um, so I'm going to renderpeople.com. This is a website I used to use in my agency days a lot just to get generic people to put into scenes. And I'm going to grab the 3D rigged people. Um, so I've downloaded that. And now I can come over into Unity and I'm inside of the editor. And the first thing I need to do is pull in that model or that asset. So where I unzipped this to has uh, a package, a JPEG file and FBX to not make this tutorial about ingesting external data. I'm just going to drag the package into my project and hit import. And we can go into that as y'all want on a different video. Um, what that's going to do is pull in my asset, which is this character. And I can see very quickly that the character <laughs> is bright pink. So the material is likely not for the render pipeline that we're looking at. So I can go into the materials folder here and I'm going to pull up what the material is. And in doing so, I can see that this is not an HDRP shader. So I'm just gonna come in here and do HDRP lit. Um, it's all gray, so we need to repopulate the base uh, I doubt this is a mask map, but I'm going to populate it as such anyways and just see where we get to. And then our normal, which already is a normal map, it seems. So that's cool. I'm going to turn our sun very briefly, and then we're going to get into animate. So now we can see our person uh, looks extraordinarily shiny. So let's come in here and crank down the smoothness, and we should be ready to go. Okay, looking good. Last thing I want to do so that I can visualize my animations better is just put down a 3D object cube and pull it down to roughly feet height. And we will be able to see a bit more of the animation and understand where our character is going. So first thing we need to do is go into Window, Package Manager. I'm going to Alt-Tab back to this website that we were looking at and click on Get Started and Animate and it's guiding me to type in this package name. So I'm gonna copy that, Alt-Tab back over, and add by name this package for Muse Animate. We're gonna go ahead and cut to once it's in, and then we'll get going. All right, and it's just finishing up, and we can tell that it's worked because up here we can see Muse and Centus uh, icons in the toolbar. I'm going to go to Muse, New Animate Generator, and I'm going to drag this right up here. So we can now see a kind of generic 3D scene with a grid um, and not much else. So this is all that you have to start out with that makes it extremely simple to get in and start animating without needing to be a professional animator. So I can get in here and say, character does a front roll. And I'm just going to generate one, but you can increase the amount of generations that you would like to do so that you can see more off of this one prompt. And I'm going to hit generate. And what will happen is it's going to generate in the background and it will show me this animation with a generic 3D humanoid uh, avatar, if you will. If I like the animation, I can then export it and put it onto my character and see it run. If I don't like it, I can get in and actually start to edit it, which is pretty cool. I think that works good enough for me. So because I see that the character is kind of dipping, 
and their hands go beneath where their feet are, they're also off the ground a bit. I'm just gonna make this editable and convert. And we're gonna let this convert into an animation that I can now edit. Okay, so it is now editable. I'm gonna hit done, that's terrific. Um, and the first thing I'm gonna do just for uh, good hygiene's sake on the animation is just drop everything down so the feet are touching the ground. And now I wanna pull these feet down. Pull down just a little bit. You can see how the different pieces of the rig are actually reacting in correspondence with how they would in an actual environment. So you can see the heels of the feet and the knees reacting well. That's fantastic. Uh, reminds me of good rigging when you're talking FK, IK handling, all that type of stuff. Okay, all of this is now touching the ground. Let me delete that pose. Okay, and that looks pretty good. So I'm going to hit play and we'll let this kind of buffer through. Pretty happy with that. A little bit of jitteriness because of my manual uh, fine tuning, but I think it's all fantastic. Uh, so let's leave that where it's at. I'm going to go ahead and hit export. And now what we can do is do a front roll to anim. Uh, and this one's just checked a little bit closer by an animator or by someone in Unity. So we can see, fortunately, when we select this asset that it already has an animator on it. It has the avatar that's been created that's just a, a humanoid avatar rig. And I can come in here and just do create animator controller. I'll just leave that called new animator controller. Nothing uh, too fancy needs to be done there. And I'll drag it into the controller of this person. And then when I double click on that, I can go into the animator and I can say create state empty. So from entry, meaning from play more or less, I'm going to trigger the front roll animation. And now when I hit play and go back into the scene, we should be rolling on the ground pretty flat. Yeah, that looks that looks good. So now what I want to do is to go into the Muse Animate tool. And here I can do a character turns right and takes a big jump forward. Say then so that we know that we're not turning right while jumping. And I'm going to do a generation time of five seconds for how long I want this animation to be. So now it's going to execute this for me in the background. Again, I'm not having to do any manual work here, really. Um, it's creating this for me. I get to fine tune it as we just did in our last animation. But ideally, we're going to see something that doesn't really need much fine tuning and we'll just run with it as is. And just like that. Okay. It's an all right jump. It's not really a big jump, but I figure it's uh, it's adequate. I'll do that for now. I could do something a bit bigger if I wanted to make it editable and start to fine tune this, but I think as is, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, it serves the purpose of getting the character to turn right, which I'm happy with. So let's do a turn right animation, come back into our animator, drag this right up, make a transition, put it in the turn right. And now when we hit play, we're going to come up here into our scene and see that this whole thing is working. I mean, how cool is this? Honestly, uh, all of this is working. I'm not having to do a whole lot. Uh, come back into the muse animate tool, let this load in. And now I want to do a uh, character does a backflip. And we'll have it be a relatively quick backflip, so three seconds of animation. And I don't really love that one, so I'm just going to generate again, and maybe I'll take it up to two generations. And I'm going to generate and see what we get from two new generations with me adding to the prompt in the air. Uh, I feel like that one's kind of a cop-out. If I told my buddies I was doing a backflip and then did that, it would uh, not be the most impressive thing. Okay, let's see what this first generation looks like. 
No, not happy with that either. So let's keep going and see what the AI comes up with on the last one. None of those are quite hitting the mark, so I think I want to try a new prompt of um, do a flip backwards in the air and land on your feet. And let's see what we get from this. So all of it, I mean, it's similar to um, to other AI tools that you've likely used that takes a bit of trial and error and you need to get pretty good with figuring out how you want to word certain types of prompts to understand um, how the AI model is best looking for what you're going to send to it. I'm actually pretty happy with that. I might be asking a lot of the system to just do a backflip like that. Whoa, that was a cool animation, but I think uh, not the closest. So I would say it's getting there. This is obviously a 1.0 uh, release, so there's a lot of quirks to work through, but I'm happy enough with that that I'm going to say, okay, cool, let's export it. And let's call this a big step back. That's nice. It's all uh, centered on the ground. I'm happy with that. And maybe what I'll do is even come in here and make this one editable. And it's going to convert. I'm just going to crank this one up into the air and see what we can do. So hopefully we do a big step back, then a uh, an aerial flip. Mm, let me leave that down. That looks good. Actually, I want all of these to be from the ground, don't I? So let's come down. Come down with you. And with you. Probably move you forward a touch. I guess that'll be a torso move forward instead of at the hips. And now is when I want the whole thing to come up. And this is likely going to look a little janky, but I'm totally good with that. So here is my character coming through the air. Looks good. And now here, I want them to come down a bit further. Same here. And there we go. And there we go. So now ideally I've just made my own backflip animation. So uh, let's see what this is going to look like. Little, a uh, little ridiculous. Actually, you know what I want to do? I want to do an extrapolated pose and let it solve the animation for where this should be between this step and the step flying backwards. Actually, I really like that. So it's almost as if the character is getting hit in the air, flying backwards and doing a backflip. I would, of course, need to come in here and do a little bit more finessing, but gosh, that's cool. So it just built that frame for me and how it thought that everything should look. Now I can hit export. I'm going to export this, call it the backflip from hit. Go back to my animator. And then I can do a big step back. I can do a backflip from hit. I can do a transition here and a transition here. And then I can do a play. And let's check this out. I'm pretty pumped. Front flip. Whoa. I believe the right turn somehow was taken out. So let's just do a... Uh, turn right, we're going to make a transition here, we're going to kill this transition, we're going to make a transition down, I'm going to turn right here. Nothing too wild. Okay, now let's watch for the animation and see how this plays. Right turn, big step back, and backflip, and hit. Boom.
So that's more than cool enough for me, uh, having done none of the real animation myself. I hope that y'all are enjoying this journey, looking at new AI tools in Unity, Unity 6, among other awesome features within our real-time 3D pipeline. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.